Is it recording? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Uh, mm -hmm. This is gonna be super awkward, but I feel like it has to be super awkward. I don't think it'll be awkward. No, I mean like for me. No. It's only I've never done an interview like this. <laughs> you're not doing an interview, you're just hanging out. So, who are you? My name is Jimmy Christensen. I am the founder of MTB Travel Review. I am a mountain biker. I am a content creator. Is that what they call us? An influencer. I'm an influencer. <laughs> uh, I am an ex-smoker. Smoked cigarettes for 15 years or so. I am an alcoholic. And I am, uh, as of May 28th, I'm six years sober from alcohol. Tell me about the year before you started riding. So before I got back into riding, uh, I went through four or five years of just uh, a lot of questions, I guess is the best way to explain it. Trying to figure out who I was. I had a lot of energy. I had a lot of anxiety. I had a lot of questions about what I was doing, lack of confidence, uh, and ultimately read, led to a lot of drinking. And the only time I was happy as a person was, was when I was drunk and the only time that I thought you know, that I was, was capable or confident was, was when I was under the influence. So before I got back into riding was a, a really dark phase. Tell me about when you were a kid riding your bike. So I started riding, oh, I don't know. My dad threw me a bike when I was probably 10, 12 years old. And uh, all I remember is like the, the instant freedom, like the sense of exploration. The fact that you could kind of pedal these two wheels anywhere you wanted. He tried to get me to mountain biking, that didn't really stick. Uh, I ended up getting into BMX. I was kind of like a, a punk child and didn't really fall into everyday sports and football and baseball. I tried all that, it didn't work. But when I was on my bike, I could, I could go anywhere, I could do anything and I felt like, you know, people weren't judging me and, and I had a crew and, and people that I could roam around with and that's, it made me feel like I had a purpose for once and I'll, I'll never forget, you know, just wandering through the neighborhood for days, like never got tired, just, I mean, there's just, there's something about riding a bike, like if you wanted a, a new video game, you rode 10 miles to Walmart, like it's just what we did and, and I think it really helped, you know, kind of shape the rest of my life in that sense and, and what my expectations were for myself and that sense of adventure that's instilled in me now. What happened in life that pulled you away from riding a bike as a kid? I think just life. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, you know, grew up and where I'm from, small town in Southern Rhode Island, there wasn't much to do. So it was kind of like, once you know with high school, you got to figure it out and go to college. That, that was the plan. That was what you're supposed to do. So, you know, I got busy and, and tried to turn my focus on college and uh, ultimately the, the bike just didn't fit when I ended up moving to Boston and, and just got kind of farther and farther away from two wheels. Um, I moved to the city, I, I got a degree in architecture and, and ultimately ended up becoming a chef. And I guess the more I got away from bikes, uh, the worse things got is the long and short of that. Was there a defining moment that you can remember or want to talk about that told you it was time to make a change? Yeah. So, um, you know, after college and, and becoming a chef, you know, I fell into this lifestyle and, and, and drinking was a big part of it. And just it got to a point where, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I, I was very dependent on alcohol and again, I just, I couldn't seem to smile without it. And one night I was at a bar, a local watering hole that I normally went to and went out to have a cigarette and I was pretty drunk at the time. Um, I had known cause I was a chef there. I knew a lot of the homeless people in the area and this, this guy Ralph came up and started talking to me and uh, bummed a cigarette and, and we just started chatting and I, I don't remember exactly how it happened but we, we started talking about you know my drinking and, and how it was a problem and you know it was pretty wild because where I was standing was, was right in front of church and this guy Ralph just, just kind of listened to my story briefly and then grabbed my hand and, and just dragged me down into this room and I sat down in the back of this room and after like you know, five minutes in my drunken state, I realized that I was sitting in the back of a, an AA meeting. And uh, yeah, I just kind of soaked it all in and my anxiety set in and I was pretty horrified, of course. Um, you know, you sit there for 20 minutes and listen to the stories and a lot of it resonated, but I was just horrified. And at the end of the meeting, they, they basically ask you, 
if you want to talk and you can raise your hand and you can talk and, and this guy Ralph raised his hand and, and pointed at me across the room and it was basically like that kid wants to talk and uh, so I did I, I broke down in front of like 60 people in the basement of a church uh, <laughs> in downtown Boston and, and told my story and yeah I'm, I'm not religious like I never really fall into those buckets but you know, I went back to the bar after and kept drinking, but the next day I, I, I basically decided if, if I was ever given a sign and had a chance to turn things around before I hurt myself or hurt somebody else that that was the time and that was May 28th, uh, 2015. So uh, that was the last night that I had a drop of alcohol. So <laughs> six years ago, big day for me um, and definitely the turning point in my life. So from that turning point in your life, so what was the, the point that put you back on two wheels, put you back into the woods, and, and sort of brought you some clarity? So yeah, I mean, I mean once, once I decided, you know, my original thing when I stopped drinking was like, oh, I'll quit for a year and it'll fix all my problems. And my problems weren't solved. Like there was, there was still a lot of angst, there was still this energy, there was still this, this lack of, of you know, self-control that I felt and this, this lack of stability and figuring out who I was. And, I forget exactly what happened, but I started thinking about bikes and I just jumped on Craigslist and I found like a, a 2012 uh, Cannondale full suspension bike on there and I snagged it for like 800 bucks and I was fired up. Like I, <laughs> I took this rinky dink bike and I had like some old spandex and a ghetto helmet and like threw together what I could figure out and, and just went into the woods and you know, I, there was just that freedom. There, there was something about being in the woods again on a bike and that sense of exploration. It was like this, this whole door opened and I was able to just think freely and, and all that mattered was what was in front of me. And I was like, it was like this nostalgia and that's, that's ultimately, that's how it started. Is there, a, is there a specific ride or a moment that you knew you fell in love with or fell back in love with your bike? I started following this group of like 10 or 15 guys. Um, and, and just wandering through the woods and I was like, can I follow you guys? And then one of them, this guy Glenn Davis stuck out and then kind of started talking to me. Everybody else was kind of like, you know, sure you can follow us. And, and I did and I followed them for around for a while and, and it turned out to be uh, the Team Granite guys um, who basically, you know, took me under their wing. And it wasn't really something about the bike. It was the sense of community that came. It was like this, this, this group that just came together and, and I was able to jump in and and start following them around and realize I wasn't as fast or as gnarly or as cool of a rider as I thought I was because these guys were all really experienced. And, but that just opened my eyes and it just I just wanted to go faster. I, I wanted that, that sense of community. I just wanted to be more involved and that's it's, it's kind of how it all began, I guess, was, was that ride and, and the Team Granite guys taking me under their wing. Everybody, or I wouldn't say everybody, but most people you meet on a mountain bike are, are just genuinely good people like they're they're outgoing they're welcoming there's you know we're not just hanging out because of booze or because of some other thing like we're hanging out because we all have this passion and this drive to be on a bike and that that inviting community that that sense of hey okay you're on two wheels like you're in that's all it takes like these are genuinely good people and that's you know i started getting a racing team granted took me my first race and i, I did an enduro race at Killington and, and did terrible. I did a front flip and crushed my full face helmet and was just like death gripped the whole time and, and really was horrified. But at the end of the day, like the, the whole race community, everybody was just stoked, like for me to have done it. Yeah, that was new. So it sounds like the fact that there's a group of people that are supportive in helping you be a better you is what really resonates with you would you agree yeah no matter what level you are no matter what person you are your background your car like none of that matters like you're on two wheels and everybody's just stoked everybody just wants to ride bikes and then be better people and i think that's 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 why i'm here that's what keeps driving me that's what made me create this channel and want to grow and, and share that community with people and, and share more riding trails and, and meet more people and race more and travel more like there's just this whole vibe and you just want to suck it up and you just want to chase it around and that's that's why I do this. I, I love it. I really do. I love the people. I love the bikes. I love everything about it. Like it's it's just it's a good time and every time you're done with a bike ride or hanging out with these people like you're stoked. You're stoked on life. You want to get out there. You want to live and that's that's what matters. How does your biggest struggle with riding help you with the biggest struggles you have in life? 
Well, it's funny. I think the biggest struggle in riding in life for me is, is kind of the same. Um, I suffer from pretty severe anxiety around anything. Um, <laughs> half the time just getting out of bed uh, is a big struggle um, and just staying motivated and, and I don't know, you know, some people are familiar with anxiety, some aren't, but it's pretty crippling and it, it leads to all this depression and, and questioning and, and that's something that I think, uh, you know, I drowned away with alcohol for a long time and, and, and that clearly wasn't a solution and that's, that's where riding came in. Like riding is, is the release. It, it's, I still get anxiety going to every ride. Like if, there's, if there's a group ride, if there's a race, like driving up, like I start freaking out. And uh, especially at the top of a race run, I know everybody does, but it's like really bad and I just want to go home. Um, and then as soon as I hit the pedals, as soon as I'm on the bike, like everything's just gone. There, there's, there's obviously anxiety about riding and, and the fear of crashing, but it's literally just you and your bike in the dirt and, and, and it opens this whole window and it's like this, like everything is let go and you just ride and you just ride like until you're crushed. And I love pushing myself to the absolute limit and just wearing myself out and, and you want to curl up and die at the end. But it's like <laughs> the most rewarding pain ever. My bike is like the cure-all. If I'm on my bike and you can ask anybody if I don't ride my bike for a week or two, it, it gets pretty bad. So it's my medicine. It's my yoga. It's, it's whatever you want to call it. It, it helps in every way and, and that anxiety is, is something that's clearly never going to go away. So I hope my bike never goes away. So yeah. So being a person that struggles with anxiety, uh, what pushed you or motivated you to want to make your first video on mountain bike travel review slash eat or whatever it might have been called at the time? It was really just a, uh, I wanted to ride new places and I wanted to travel and I just couldn't find enough information on trail systems, like is it worth driving three hours here or there to check out a trail system? So I really started just to like do these, these which MTB travel review, just review trail systems and, and show people where they could ride and, and potentially what the trails look like. Showing people, I've only been riding for four years, I've learned a lot and I learned chasing Team Granite and I learned with Cyclecraft Fitness and, and you, Willem, behind the camera kind of walking me through things. And if I can show that to the world and I can and get more people into bikes and get more people into that community and show them that it's not just, if you want to ride a bike, ride a bike. We're all humans and, and bikes are an awesome thing. Do you have a piece of advice or a message for somebody who is just at the beginning of the road of recovery and they're looking for a similar path as you. Uh, whether you would believe it or not, you are a success story in the terms of sobriety. You know, the whole reason I wanted to do this horrifying video is, <laughs> is to share and help people in my scenario. And I, I think it goes beyond just, you know, sobriety in the sense of alcohol. I, I think it's, you know, for addicts, for, like we all have our vices. It, it could be coffee, it could be screaming and yelling at people. There, there's always something in your life that is holding you back and, and something that, that is really restricting you from being a good person. For me, it was alcohol. And you know, the biggest thing I figured out, and it doesn't have to be riding, you know, whatever it is, like you need to find an outlet and you need to find that community. Um, you know, like you need to understand that other people deal with this. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a big deal. It's not easy. Uh, you need people in your corner and you need, if you get rid of something in your life, if you get rid of a vice, you're gonna need to replace that with something. And, and that's what I always tell people. I mean, first things first, like this is your decision. Nobody can force you to do it. Nobody's going to make it for you. You have to wake up every day and, and deal with this and, and take it straight on. But find another avenue, find something that's, that's positive for you, for the community, for your fitness, whatever it is, try things, get out there, try things, find friends. Like I, I searched for almost the community first before I found the riding. And then when I found something like mountain biking that I was so passionate about, the community came along with that. So don't think that you have to have a group, you have to have a squad to do something new, go do something new. And, and those people that are going to help you through the next phases of this are, are gonna find you and that's yeah I found a mountain bike and I found some friends and ta-da <laughs> here I am yeah I'm, I'm stoked to be able to share my story and you know I hope I hope this helps people I hope people can understand that keep at it and you know stay positive it's it's harder than it sounds but um, yeah just you gotta do it you gotta keep going
So yeah, I, I mean, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I hope this this helps somebody along the way. I mean, that that's all like that's all I want out of this. I, I think you know, again, mountain biking is is an amazing sport. I think it's getting bigger and bigger, especially since since COVID hit. And I hope that people stick with it. And I hope that you know, um, I hope this channel helps you. You know, I'm I'm gonna keep putting out videos. I'm gonna keep putting out more raw content. I'm gonna keep learning. I got a, I got a new bike. I'm still gonna keep riding. This, this sport is growing, everyone's progressing, the community's getting bigger. So, so get involved, stick with it, follow along, and yeah, ride bikes, be happy. Whew. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot.